Roma Wines present... Suspense! Roma Wines, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. Salud! Your health, senor. Roma Wines toast the world. The wine for your table is Roma Wine, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is the Man in Black, here for the Roma Wine Company of Fresno, California, to introduce this weekly half hour of Suspense. Tonight from Hollywood, Roma Wines bring you as star, Miss Lucille Ball, who appears tonight as a Broadway lady, whom you may have often seen if you are a devotee of musical comedy. She is the third one from the left in the chorus line. And so with this little lady's narrative about the ten grand, and with the performance of Lucille Ball as Miss Gigi Lewis, we again hope to keep you in... Suspense! Well, on this particular night, I'm standing in front of the Broadway, Lindy's, with my nose practically pasted against the window. It's late, and I'm hungry. I've been pounding the pavements all day doing the rounds of the manager's offices. You'd think a good hoofer like I ought to be able to land something with all the shows on the big street. But here I am, standing like General Sherman's statue in front of Lindy's, looking at the pasted-up menu and mentally overindulging in a big, thick, juicy T-bone steak smothered with onions. That comfortable crowd inside there can toy politely with their chicken sandwiches and their shrimp cocktails for all I care. Just give me a T-bone smothered with onions. Here I am with five cents in my handbag, literally. Enough for the ride home in the subway, no extra charge for the empty stomach. Well, anyway, I could take my shoes off when I get in the subway. I turn around and give Lindy's one last sorrowful gander and then make for the subway entrance. It's just the time the shows are letting out. Plenty of people from the taxi set are taking the subway home these nights being short on tires and gas. So I get in that Times Square jam that looks like 5 o'clock p.m. and feels like a Russian pincers movement on the Polish border. I'm getting shoved toward the turnstile, so I quick try to get my handbag open to reach for that lonesome nickel. All of a sudden, I feel something jerk out of my hand. My bag is gone. I try to yell, stop! Hey, hey, stop! I twist around and see somebody, a little guy with short bow legs running toward the stairs. Stop that guy! Stop that guy! He's got my purse! Hey, look, there he goes. Stop the guy! Trying to break out of the mob and after the purse snatcher, but I'm like the ace of spades being dealt off the bottom of the pack. When I'm finally in the clear a little, I see a tall guy running after that little guy who has my purse. They both disappear around the corner and up the steps. There's plenty of commotion in the crowd. You'd think there was a million dollars in my handbag for all the fuss they're making. But I don't stop to think about anything except that I lost my fair home. I take out after the tall guy. When I get to the foot of the stairs, the tall guy's coming down again. And he's got my bag in his hand. He's smiling a big, wide smile at me, and I'm gazing gratefully up into his big brown eyes and noticing the way his hairline ain't receding in. Just the guy to go around rescuing ladies in distress. Regular Sir Galahad or somebody. Is this yours, miss? Yeah. Gee, how can I ever thank you? Think nothing of it. Here you are. What about the guy, the, the, the thief? Oh, there was a cop on the street. He'll take care of him. What about you? You're all right, aren't you? Oh, sure, sure, I'm all right. <laughs> you uh, look kind of pale. I uh, guess it would have been pretty tough to lose your purse that way, especially this late at night. <laughs> oh, I don't know why you bothered, really. Nothing but a nickel in it, anyway. I don't carry much with me when I'm out at night. <laughs> <laughs> a uh, nickel will get you home. He's smiling at me again, and my heart saying, Oh, brother... We both start towards the mob at the turnstile, and I'm busy hoping he's going my way so we can sort of get better acquainted, you know? Well, good night. Hang on to that pocketbook now. Well, aren't you, uh... Well, good night. I'm caught in that mob at the turnstile again, and the train's coming in. Somehow, the way you do in crowds, I lose sight of it. And I gotta concentrate on digging out that nickel to put in the slot. I open up my bag and find the nickel all right, and then my heart almost stops. There in my handbag 
sits a great big wad of bills. Folding money, cash. I managed to get the nickel in the slot and get myself through to the platform and on the train, all the while hanging onto that bag as if there were ten grand in it. Ten thousand dollars. Gee, it could be that much. The roll is big enough. My head's going around in crazy circles. The door's closed behind me and everybody in the car is rushing to find a seat. Over the noise, I hear some contented soul whistling. I grab a seat next to a fat man who's taking up most of it. I sit there hanging onto my bag, not daring to look inside. I tell myself I'm dreaming. There's not really a big roll of bills in there. Extreme hunger is giving me the DTs. How would I get a bankroll as big as your fist? What am I doing with money? Then I remember the purse snatcher. He must have put it there. But why? A fat guy next to me tries to drum up a conversation. Uh, well, uh, nice night, ain't it? Yeah, cold. You the young lady what got her purse snatched? Yeah. The lucky thing, you got it back, ain't it? Yeah, yeah, very lucky. I always say it ain't good for a young lady, especially a, a nice-looking dame like you, to carry a lot of money around when she's out nice. Huh? What makes you think I got a lot of money? Well, the way you carried on when that fella snatched your purse. Oh, yeah. I'm showing this fat palooka by my attitude that I don't go for conversing. I'm sitting there looking straight at the wall ads, and the one across from me is a big photo in natural color of Miss Subway in 1944. A Brooklyn girl, all dressed up and dripping with furs and probably wearing Chanel number no. five. Money. Hmm, all the money I need. No more pounding the pavements and waiting in outer offices for some two-bit job in a show that's due to close opening night. Clothes. The fur, maybe. Chanel number no. five, maybe. An apartment downtown with a switchboard to announce people instead of a fifth-floor walk-up in the Bronx. Food. Hmm, T-bone steak smothered in onions. Just walk right in and order it. Fun, maybe go to a nightclub and... Say, though, maybe it's counterfeit dough. Maybe. Uh, see those guys coming through? They're cops. How do you know? They might be the Rover boys. Well, uh, I can spot a plain clothes dick in a minute. They all look alike. They all got a certain furs and noise. Well, that don't prove they're dicks. I don't know. Maybe it's the way they part their hairs. <laughs> plain clothesmen. Looking for something, hmm? Hot money, maybe. So, suppose I'm found with it. How am I going to prove somebody planted it on me? I can see them laughing at that one now. That's a good one. Ha, ha, ha. She didn't steal the dough. Honest. She just found it in her purse. Ha, ha. That's a good one. Lock her up. 25 years. Well, good night, little lady. I'm getting off here. This your stop? No, no thanks. I go further uptown. Well, good night. I'm certainly glad you found your voice. <laughs> good night, Fatso. The Rover boys pass on through, and I decide to sneak another look at my bag. I open it up very carefully. The bank rolls there all right. Some of the bills are in big denominations, too. There could be ten grand, and it looks like the real thing. But there's also something else, something I didn't see before, a piece of paper stuffed into the roll. I reach in and get it, looking around to see if I'm being watched. All I see in the car are sleepy people, so I unfold the paper and read what's scribbled on it. Get off at 161st Street and follow Yankee Doodle. That don't make sense. What's Yankee Doodle got to do with it? I get up and I'm making for the door when I hear it. And then I remember I've been hearing that whistling right along and didn't notice it. I back into the first empty seat and prepare to do some thinking. Somebody in this car wants that bankroll again. Could it be Sir Galahad? I just can't bear to think of him as a criminal type, but he was awful quick to go chasing after my purse. And he could have been in this car all along without me seeing him. I try to get a quick look around, but there's people in the aisles. And a dear little old lady is pushing her way forward. She sits down next to me. I was sitting next to a man who kept snoring. Do you mind if I sit here? No, not at all. I didn't know there could be so much confusion in the subway this late at night. Well, in New York, you get to confusion 24 hours a day. Well, I guess I'm just not used to it, that's all. I Say, you look I, like there's something wrong. What's the matter? Do you feel sick? I, I'm all right. Oh. Hey, oh. hey, she's passed out. Won't somebody help me? This woman's sick. Yeah. Look out. Here, give her a slug of this. That's a bring her to. Thanks, that's well. Now look, lady, just take a swallow. It won't hurt you. Go on. Swallow it. That's it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
Oh, I'm terribly sorry, really. I well, Forget it. How do you feel? I can't imagine what happened. All at once, everything seemed to whirl around. You sure you're all right now? I'll be fine in just a moment. Here's your medicine, mister. Thanks. That's okay. You're awfully kind. I didn't think people were so kind in a big city like this. You better take it easy now. Where do you get off? What's that? Where do you get off? Oh, 169th Street. That's where my sister lives. I'm visiting her, you see, and I just thought I'd go downtown tonight and see a show and have a good time. Evelyn told me how to go on the subway, and everything was fine until just now. You're not hungry or anything? Oh, no, no. It's not that. I, I have plenty of money. At, at least I did have. Yeah? What happened to your money? Somebody stole my life savings. No, not really. Who'd do a thing like that? Eh? Who'd do a thing like that? A thing like that? Oh, I, I don't worry about it, you understand. I'll get the money back. How? Well, don't you remember the old saying? It takes a thief to catch a thief. Yeah, I suppose so. Yes. Well, that's just how I plan to catch the person who stole my money. Oh. Uh, how much did you lose? What's that? How much did you lose? Oh, lose. Well, I had been saving it all my life, and there was at least, well, $10,000. Gee, that's too bad. Well, am I going to give it back to her if it turns out to be her money? How do I know she's not pulling a fast one? I remember that in shows, it's always the dear old lady who fakes a faint to get sympathy when she's really the brains of the mob. Yeah. I know that she got a big gulp from the bottle while she had the chance. Well, supposing she is on the level. Would I give her the money when I have it here? Ten grand? And me practically in the lap of luxury? Would I? Oh, my. Listen, do you know how to whistle? <laughs> what a strange thing to ask me. As a matter of fact, yes, I do. Well, I'm awfully fond of whistling. You are? Mm -hmm. Are you? Well, you know, I was judged the champion whistler of the ladies' auxiliary at church back home. Now, isn't that nice? Yes. Sir? Won't you whistle something for me? Oh, well, I couldn't. Not here. People would turn around and look at me. <laughs> well, you already caused quite a stir when you fainted. Oh, did I? Mm-hmm. Well, then, uh, what would you like to hear? Yankee Doodle. Well, I'll try. But I guess it doesn't prove anything. Uh, I beg your pardon? I meant, how was it you say you lost all that money? Oh, the money. That, why, the bank teller back home just ran off with the savings of practically everybody in town. Oh, it happened back home, huh? When? Well, now, let me see. Why, it must have been five... No, no, no. It was just about six years ago. Oh. Yes, and why do you ask me? Well, I just thought maybe you were... I thought you might have just lost it tonight, the way you talk. Well, I hope I didn't alarm you. But I just keep knowing I'm going to get that money back someday. Yeah, I'm sure you will. Oh, listen. Somebody else is whistling Yankee Doodle now. That's very fine whistling, too. Mm, isn't it, though? <laughs> yes. Yeah. And this time, it's no old lady. I got an idea it's somebody who just possibly could have a slight case of murder on his mind. Tonight for Suspense, Roma Wines bring you a star, Miss Lucille Ball, whom you have heard in the first act of The Ten Grand by Virginia Radcliffe. Tonight's adventure in Suspense. Far to the south of us is our good neighbor country, Ecuador, land of towering mountains, sweeping vistas. Let's imagine ourselves there now, dining on the Ruth Terrace Cafe of the exclusive Hotel Metropolitano in Guayaquil, Ecuador. Near us, an American has just complimented his hosts on the magnificent dinner, to which his host quickly responds, Ah, yes, it is true that our foods are famous, but from your land comes a rare delicacy also, one which has spread the fame of your own California to many far corners of the world. It is this superb wine, so excellent that we in Ecuador import it from your United States. My friend, 
I drink to you in your own delicious Roma wine. Our Ecuadorian friend is right. For Roma wine's superb quality has won such favor in many far places that they import it, enjoy it as a rare luxury. But not so here in America. Here, millions know and enjoy Roma wines as an inexpensive, everyday delight at mealtimes and when entertaining. So many, in fact, that Roma is America's largest selling wine. With no high import duties to pay nor expensive shipping costs, you enjoy these distinguished wines for only pennies a glass. Ask for Roma wines, which bring you old world winemaking skill, plus Roma's own modern scientific controls and testing. That's R O M A, Roma Wines, America's largest selling wine, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. And now it is with pleasure that we bring back to our soundstage Lucille Ball in The Ten Grand, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. <laughs> Well, this is it. Oh, must have been dozing. Is this your station? Yeah, and the next stop is yours. Don't fall asleep and miss it now. <laughs> well, I won't. You've been very kind. I do want to thank you. No, think nothing of it. Well, good night. Good night, my dear. Now, be careful crossing the street. Sure, don't worry. I'll be plenty careful. I get off the train. Stand for a minute on the platform, looking around. I don't see Sir Galahad, but he could have gone through to another car and come out down the line. Several guys are on the platform, and they all hurry up the steps of the street. I go up, too. I look ahead at the block I have to travel. Then I hear it again, in the darkness of the street. I can't tell exactly where it's coming from, but I'm standing in the light, and whoever's after me has a pretty perfect target. I walk away, hugging my purse and shaking like six hangovers. I tell myself that pretty soon Yankee Doodle will grab me and take the money. Any second now. He wouldn't need to kill me. I, I haven't seen him, so I can't identify him. He could just take the money and leave. But suppose he enjoys killing people. Suppose he gets panicky all of a sudden and his finger slips on the trigger. Suppose he's a... he's a, a, a maniac. I think about screaming. But nobody'd hear me in time because screaming probably makes Yankee Doodle's trigger finger tremble. Or, or why doesn't he do something? Why doesn't he take the money away from me and get it over with? Does he want me to offer it to him on a gold platter? Uh-uh. Not Gigi. She's got a T-bone steak smothered in onions waiting for her if she ever gets out of this in one piece. And now I'm getting toward the next corner, and there's a dim street lamp on the other side. I see him. That's strange. He's been walking ahead of me all this time. Then I hear something else. Footsteps. Somebody behind me. Now listen. That doesn't sound like the tread of somebody hurrying home to the little woman. That's the steady tread of somebody trailing somebody. I don't know how I know it, but I know it. There's Yankee Doodle up ahead, but here's also somebody behind me I don't like just by instinct. I'm sandwiched. I'm the ham between two slices of rye. Now listen again. He's getting closer. By the time I reach the corner, he'll catch up with me. I try walking faster. He's walking faster, too. I turn around. I can see his dark shape behind me with a distant street lamp back of him. Then I see something else. Back away, across the street, is another man walking fast. Now I got three of them. I'm in a triple-decker sandwich now. I want to scream. I want to yell, help! But my heart got all mixed up in my larnix somehow, and I know I'd never be able to project my voice past the next crack on the sidewalk. They're catching up to me fast. If this is the end, sister, this is it. I'm already imagining the cold steel on my back, and then... walk right on past me. Don't even give me a tumble. They're making time, and as the one on my side gets ahead of me, I see him nod to the one across the street. They're not tailing me. They're after Yankee Doodle. They heard him whistle, and they'll be catching up with him any minute now. I heave a big sigh of relief and consider a quick exit back to the subway with my ten grand. I can just barely see the two of them as they come close to the next street lamp. They could be plainclothesmen, and, but I don't think so somehow. In that case, they've got an illegal desire to get something they think Yankee Doodle's got. Or maybe Yankee Doodle's the eagle 
illegal part of the deal. Suppose he turns out to be Sir Galahad. It's pretty confusing, and I ain't happy about it either way. But something, I don't know what, makes me take after the two Rover boys instead of going my own way while I got the chance. I look up ahead. Yankee Doodle's a block away now, and he stops for a second under a streetlight. He's listening. I can tell that, even though he's too far away for me to tell if he's Sir Galahad. Then quickly, he disappears into the shadows again. I'm trying to keep my heels from clicking too loud, but they sound like drum beats, so I take my shoes off quick. The Rover boys are up on the corner now, but I'm making it by the time they're halfway down the next block. The street lamp must have burned out along here because it's blacker than a Scaparelli dinner dress. If only a police car would come by or something. Maybe Winchell would be cruising with the boys. Yeah, and then he'd, he'd give me a plug in his column and it'd be easy for me to get a job. Oh, what am I thinking about things like that for now? Besides, there ain't a car on the street. There hasn't been one since I got off the subway. Suddenly, out of the blackness, a hand grabs my arm. Another covers my mouth. Be quiet. Don't scream. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> Here, <laughs> let's get down in the stairway. Where they can't see this against the light. Huh? <laughs> now. You didn't need to choke me. They'll come back this way in a minute. As soon as they found out they'd lost me. How did you get here? I thought you was way ahead of them. I was. I ducked in here and let them pass. Are you with me? Why should I be? It's my life or theirs. So what? I got your purse back for you. Yeah, Sir Galahad. You've got my money. It could be their money. Yes, but it isn't. Wait, they're coming back. I got an idea. I'll step out and say something, and you, you... All right. Get up there quick. They're coming. Well, hiya, boys. Fancy seeing you here. Nice night, ain't it? Never mind, sister. We ain't got time to chat. Well, you needn't blind me with that flashlight. I just wanted to pass the time of day. Well, it ain't that time of day, so step aside and look. Hey, let go. Hey, oh. he was trying to get up. Let's make sure they're really out. Are you kidding? They're both out farther than the 12-mile limit. Then let's get away from here fast. Come on. Wait a minute. What's the matter? You don't want to be picked up around here, do you? Well, I got to put my shoes on first, don't I? Say, do you know I broke my heel on that heel? <laughs> So, here we are, 15 minutes later, sitting in an all-night restaurant after running practically 12 blocks and me forgetting all about the fact my feet was killing me a couple hours ago. Sir Galahad's breathing just like normal, but I'm still sounding like a pair of bellows trying to catch my wind. He's looking at me and laughing in a nice way, and I don't mind. <laughs> you know, what you need is a little regular exercise. That would uh, get you in condition. Nice, steady job hoofing somewhere. I'll do that for me. <laughs> I wonder how long it will be before the cops find us. Uh... Maybe you ought to report it first, just to be on the safe side. No, no. It would be too dangerous. I have to get rid of the money first. Oh. No, I... <laughs> I did not rob a bank. Well, there's other illegal ways to get ten grand. Here comes the waitress. Better order, and then we can talk, huh? I can't believe I'm really going to get a steak inside of me instead of hot lead. <laughs> Wait until you see what the steak's like before you feel too happy. Know what you want yet? Yeah, a long time ago. T-bone steak, rare, smothered in onions. Uh, make it two, please. Two teas, rare and buried. All right, shoot. What am I saying? <laughs> I, I am a Greek. Yeah? I came over here when I was about 15. My father and mother are still in Athens. I couldn't get them out of the country when the Italians invaded. So I... I don't know where they are now. Oh, gee, that's too bad. Oh, I'm like a lot of people over here. I want to do something for my mother country, even though I am a naturalized American. So in my spare time, I collect contributions from other Greeks living over here. Oh, you mean for the Relief Society? Oh, no, 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 that's, that's different. This money supports the Greek underground. It has to be gotten and sent very quietly because certain people over here would like very much to know who's operating the underground in Greece. You see? Yeah, I'm beginning to. What about the Rover boys? Who? The two kids we lulled to sleep back there. Oh, well, I can't prove it yet, but uh, I think they're Axis agents. They've been following me ever since I left home this morning. Today was my day off, and I've been making the rounds, collecting. You did pretty well. How much is in that bankroll? $10,415. Oh, boy, you're quite a salesman. <laughs> I've got the good product to sell. Anyway, I thought I could shake those guys in the subway. 
But then when you got your purse lifted, I did a little quick thinking and decided the money would be safer with you for a while. Mm. And I do want to thank you. Oh, that's all right. Always glad to help out. Well, I guess you'd like to have your ten grand back now, huh? <laughs> you know, in Greece, they have a law that uh, whoever finds money gets to keep ten percent as a reward. No kidding! <laughs> yes. So, the way we'd figure it, you get $1,041.50. Say, that's wonderful. That's a great custom. I wonder why they don't adopt it in America. Well, I guess America has a lot of things that Greece doesn't have. Uh, T-bone steaks, for instance. Yeah, that's true. Well, here you are. I hope you get the dough into the right hands. Thank you very, very much. Uh, aren't you going to count out your 10%? Mm-mm. I gotta contribute something to winning the war, ain't I? Say, miss. You want me? Yeah, what happened to them two T-bone steaks? Oh, well, I'm sorry, but when I took your order for the steak, I forgot this was Meatless Tuesday. Oh, no. <laughs> And so closes the Ten Grand, starring Lucille Ball. Tonight's tale of Suspense. Suspense is produced and directed by William Spear. Have you had the thrilling experience of enjoying a meal prepared and served with delightful Roma wine? Well, tomorrow evening, we suggest that when preparing your dinner, whether it be fish, meat, or poultry, just add a generous portion of your favorite Roma table wine, Sauterne, Burgundy, or Claret. Then, simply put the same bottle, well chilled, on the table with the meal. You'll be in for a new experience in just how good even the simplest everyday foods can be when prepared and also served with superbly flavored Roma wines. Don't put off discovering how much these delicious and inexpensive Roma wines can add to the pleasure of everyday living. Remember, thousands make Roma wines their daily standby for greater enjoyment at a cost of only pennies a glass. Ask for R-O-M-A, Roma Wines, America's largest selling wine, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is Lucille Ball. I always enjoy my appearances on Suspense, and tonight I'm particularly proud because Mr. Spear has just counted up and he says that tonight I said more words per minute than any actress he has ever had on the show. Well, here's just a few more, and I hope you will give heed to them. Don't let tomorrow go by without buying an extra war bond. Lucille Ball appeared tonight through the courtesy of Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of the White Cliffs of Dover. Next Thursday, same time, we will present the best-selling novel, The Walls Came Tumbling Down, and Mr. Keenan Wynn will be your star of... Suspense. Presented by Roma Wines. R-O-M-A. Made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.